Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and I am here today with set number 7622, Race for the Stolen Treasure. This is an Indiana Jones set from 2008, and was based on the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first of the four movies in the series. This has 272 pieces, four minifigures and a horse, and treasure, and is originally retailed for $30. I remember when I first saw this set in stores and in the magazines, I was really hyped for it because I knew it was going to be packed with action. I mean, it's Indiana Jones after all. So let's take a closer look at the set now, starting with our instructions. If everybody run off the scene. So as we look on the instructions, you can see it's a horizontal view. Um, and that's actually a little bit different from most instruction books that we get just to give you a good look at the picture and also the box art is relatively the same. You could also see from the top of it, Indiana Jones pictured there. And you also have this nice whip design and some ancient uh, inscriptions on the side. The instructions do fold out in this fashion. So you do read it in more of a um, profile view instead of or portrait, I think that's the right word. There are several bags in this set. The first bag lets you build the four minifigures and the Jeep, and the second bag allows you to build the larger uh, truck with this set. It's very thorough and actually maybe too big of an instruction book. And the way you can see how all the pieces are put on here, it probably didn't need this big a size um, for putting the instructions together. It could have easily been a smaller instruction book just by the um, just by the, the size of it. I'll skip through all the instructions so you can see uh, one page right after the instructions. We got this nice little picture of all the things you built in the set. Then it also shows you uh, the parts count and the parts list on one page. Hey, doesn't that seem a little bit familiar? That's right. They did a little error in the in the uh, magazine or the, the instructions, and for some reason they put the same page twice in the instruction booklet. I guess they didn't have a page to fill in for the next to the piece count, so it's kind of weird that they did that. I don't think it's really necessary. And also, um, I didn't mention this before, but throughout the instructions, you'll notice the. Uh, I don't know how to say it properly, but the soldiers in the set all are shown with brown hands. Whereas in the set, they do not have brown hands. Their hands are skin tone. But for Indiana Jones, he has skin tone hands. Why did that happen? I have no idea. Could have been a printing error. But you can see some of the main features of the set shown on the pages. All the little actions that are part of the scene where he chases after the treasure. And we'll get more into that when we look at the set. One giant page for the complete saga. Lots of blank space. One giant page for the Lego Indiana Jones the video game coming summer 2008. And two giant pages for the other Wave 1 Indiana Jones sets, including the one that we're reviewing. And I have also reviewed the motorcycle chase set, so you can check that out on my channel. We also have a very large page for signing up for the LEGO Club. And we also have a large page on the back for the win section. So here we have the three soldier minifigures in this set. As in the movie, they are supposed to be German soldiers. And they pretty much have the same exact uniforms. Um, when I checked back and seeing the movie in terms of accuracy for the uniforms, they seem pretty accurate in the details for this set. And you also notice for the Last Crusade set, Motorcycle Chase, it also has the same torso and leg printing. And for one of the figures, it has the same exact face. I'll take off these nice little hats, which are in a good color. Not really seen often in that color. To get a better look at their faces, the first one you might recognize from other sets, like um, the classic form of J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man. This one is also shown for a couple figures throughout uh, Star Wars and Indiana Jones. And this last face doesn't appear too many times outside of this theme, but it does appear in the kind of small and kind of um, not really great looking um, 
Speed Racer sets. He's available as one of the minifigures from that theme. All these figures are exactly the same because they are soldiers and because they are German soldiers. <laughs> Just playing around with that. Anyways, um, only one of them includes a gun while the others have guns that are a part of their vehicles. So very nice looking figures. I think they're nice for army building and nice to get three of them in this set. Although I would say the set could encourage more figures um, in terms of making it movie accurate because in the movie there were tons and tons of soldiers in this scene. The last minifigure we have is of course Henry Jones Sr. No, Jr. This is Indiana Jones. There's a better look at his face so you can see this is the same face that is later on used for some of the Star Wars characters. Uh, it's just a plain figure face. I'll put his nice hat back on him. He's got really nice torso printing, which is slightly obscured by the shoulder bag, an introduction from um, this theme. But you can see a better look at it while we have it blinded. And it also, it's relatively the same as the one that's seen for clutch powers. If you tried to make that minifig, you could use this torso. And I put his arms back down. He's got a really cool color for his torso. A very, very dark brown. And also great looking on his uh, legs where we have that nice um, belt printing. And nothing really on the back and no double-sided face for him. Oh well. I guess all throughout the adventure he just feels ready to take on any and as many German soldiers as he wants to. I'm a cowboy on a plastic horse I ride. And I want it, want it, golden treasure. Alright, so here we have Indiana Jones with his horse. And as you can see, he just fits right in there. There's no need to, you know, have him sitting. He just stands right on top of the horse. This is the old version of horse that we've seen from Lego. So it does not have an ability to move its, um, its back portion. It still moves the head up and down, but the legs are entirely stationary. Can't move those at all. And you can see on the saddle, he has his whip, which is still in a curl from when you get it in the packaging. You could unwind it if you want to. And he also has a pistol on the other side. This is accurate to the movie because Indiana Jones does ride a white horse to chase after the treasure. Next vehicle we have is the Jeep. This is a really nice looking military Jeep and really good detail on this one. Um, this is one of several Jeeps that were used in the scene that were chasing Indiana Jones behind the truck. Um, and there is a scene in which um, the guy on the back uses a turret to try to shoot Indiana Jones, but I think he, he terribly misses. They also drive off a cliff, if you see it. It's pretty funny, I think. Very nice details on here. We also have a spare wheel on the back, so you can make a quick change in case he falls off a cliff again. Uh, there are two pieces that I had to replace in this set because for some reason they got lost. And you can see that it's a lighter gray on this side and this side. You probably wouldn't have noticed if I didn't point it out. Um, but really good detail for this. I like how it's a six wide build. It doesn't go beyond that. Um, and, you know, kind of sticks to like a modern Lego City theme. So this would be good just as is in a Lego City. Very sturdy build. Very well built. I like all the flag pieces they use to cover up details. Or to make the details better, I mean. <laughs> they don't really cover anything bad up and there's not much to see underneath um, but it really makes this model pop it makes this model look a lot better um, with all the you know kind of like an armor or you know kind of like that plating around um, the wheels you have a section that one of the rear view mirrors is holding a rifle for this guy and you can move the machine gun back and forth just crosses over this guy's head as he's driving, no worries. But this guy can fall off if you turn it the right way, or the wrong way, whatever your side is. It's also nice to get this little windscreen, just enough room to fit the figure inside. Very cool looking Jeep. Next rolling on in is our main attraction. This is where the gold is. This is the large truck. Um, in the movie, this was 
the thing that um, Indiana Jones was mostly chasing because it had the treasure, the Ark of the Covenant, in the back, sealed up with some soldiers. Now, in this model, there's only one soldier that is shown driving it, but you can add some of these in here if you wanted to, to put it in the second seat on the side, or to fill them in the back, because there is enough room for that. But let's take a look around at the model itself. It is almost on an eight wide uh, scale. I mean, it's built to be six wide, but with the wheels hanging out and some of the other parts in the back hanging out, it's almost eight studs in width. It still presents the model really well, just like the last one has a lot of nice covering over the wheels, um, you know, to make those nice fenders. It has some good details all the way around. It has a big fabric piece in the back, which you can remove. And there is our gold, well, unfortunately, it's not the Ark of the Covenant. It's just a treasure chest, painted gold with some treasure. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, why is that in here? We know Indiana Jones chased after it, the Ark of the Covenant. Well, if I remember correctly, and correct me if this is wrong, but when they had the set released, they actually had an interview in one of the early LEGO Club magazines when the set was released, and it mentioned they put the Ark of the Covenant in another set, and they put the treasure chest in this set. They didn't want to have two sets with the same treasure, because that's stupid. I mean... You, you know, if you want the Ark of the Covenant with this, you want to buy that other set too. That's thus spending fifty dollars and making Lego money. Anyways, they got really nice tires on here. These are very classic tires that haven't been used for a very long time, since approximately the Adventurer series in the late and uh, no early two thousands. It also goes along with this piece in the middle, and if you can't see that very well. Well, I'll take off the top. In there, you can fit two minifigures on a six wide base. How cool is that? So I could throw one of these other guys in here, or we could have Indiana Jones trying to punch another guy to get control of the car. And, you know, just seat two guys in there. Good enough space. A little narrow on the window, but still, you know, gives a good effect. We also got some nice details along the front. And I think that silver piece, the chrome piece is supposed to be um, the Mercedes symbol or whatever the car company was in the movie because there was a close-up shot with that shown on the truck. <laughs> now as I mentioned earlier and in the instructions there are several features that are movie accurate. For example you could have Indiana Jones or the soldier and when he gets pushed off the car you know you could have him hanging from the front. You could also kind of have Indiana Jones slip under the truck and hold on to the sides. He mainly can hold on one side or the other because there are small clips that can, you know, that can hold him there and he can just ride along the side of the truck because it's still driving. So that's pretty cool. You also have a couple clips further up here on these two sides as well as the other side. If you want to use the whip, you got plenty of opportunity. I'd like to call it whippertunity because it's an opportunity to use a whip. Just clip it on there because there is a small uh, little attachment on the end of the whip. It, it gets a little hard if you have it coiled up like I do, but it'll still work. You can hold it on there and you can have Indiana Jones come up the side if you want. So it provides more action features. And I did test this before, but you can have the whip on the back, the way the Indiana Jones hangs on the back of the truck, trying to catch up with it. Um, all, all these little action features are very simple. They don't actually provide anything except just, you know, putting the whip or putting the figures where you want them, but they do represent what happens in the movie. So if you want to make it movie accurate, you got it. Now, to take him away, you can fold out these sides, and you can take out the fabric. This is all printed. If you want, you could have it as an open flatbed truck in the back. You have enough space in here that even with the gold, with our treasure, you could fit a whole bunch of your German soldiers just sitting inside. Um, they can't really sit the other way on the inside because there's not enough width, but you could probably sit them in there first and then have the gold on their laps if you wanted to. 
but still works out really nicely for this truck. I think this is a really awesome set. There's a really good price of $30 to get all these really cool vehicles. I mean, Lego has always vowed that they will never make anything military, but this is pretty much as close to the military as it gets, um, even though it's from a movie. So if you want to get a really awesome truck, a really awesome Jeep, and a horse, this is your set. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time Woo! with more LEGO set reviews.